The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed me over to you. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this earth. Well then, where is his kingdom? His kingdom is in our souls. And for some reason, people don't seem to talk as much about souls as they did back years ago. When is the last time you heard a homily about the soul? When is the last time you heard about what it takes for our souls to get to heaven? And yet this is the most important single thing any of us can do. We believe, we as Catholics believe that we are body and soul. But we live in a world today that pays almost no attention to the soul. Everyone is fretting, worried, preoccupied, obsessed with all the other things. And sometimes people don't even seem to believe there is a soul. And I'll give you a simple reason why that's the case. On any given Sunday, three quarters, three out of four Catholics are not at Mass. And you say, oh, Father, you know, they find Mass boring. They don't like the priest. They've got other things. Well, you can make all the excuses you want for those 75%. But do we believe that we have a soul, an immortal soul, that must be fed and nourished as truly as our bodies, our minds? St. Augustine is the great doctor of grace. And he says grace does so many things to us. Grace, first of all, sanctifies us. Gratia sanctificans, sanctifying grace. We had a little baby, beautiful baby, Nora Elaine baptized this morning. Isn't that a great name? I used to love Nicky Nora Charles. Do you know those movies? Yeah, it's the thin man. What a beautiful name. And today, this morning, she received sanctifying grace to become a child of God. After my 1030 Mass, I visited two ladies who were dying, one at the Pillars Hospice and one at St. Joe's. And we prayed the last rites for them. And we prayed that the Lord, who has given them the grace through their whole lives, would bring them home. And I gave them Holy Communion little tiny piece under their tongues that would dissolve because they could no longer chew. But that's all right. These little old ladies, again with beautiful names, Lorraine and Beatrice, they're heading home to heaven tonight. And we gave them the grace of the Holy Eucharist. 
Sometimes I think we don't really believe that grace is necessary. Sometimes I think we can do all the other things and worry about all the other things. But the Lord says to us the kingdom, His kingdom, is not of this earth. In fact, elsewhere, He says the kingdom of God is within you. And if there's anything that gets me more irritated than the fact that so many Catholics no longer believe in a soul that needs grace, the grace of the sacraments, what gets me even more angry, yes, angry, is the fact that many parents and grandparents no longer give a hoot about whether their children and grandchildren go to Mass at all. They say, oh, Father, let them make their own choices. Father, it's up for them to decide. Do you believe that there is grace at Mass? And if our children and grandchildren do not have that grace, their souls will die. Their eternal souls will die. You say, oh, Father, would you please chill? I'm not going to chill. If I knew there was a family here in this parish that was not feeding their children, would I simply say, oh, say lovey, to each his own? I would not. I would not say, oh, that's fine that that family chooses not to feed their children. I would call the police and have those children taken away. So you tell me, Catholic parents and grandparents, are you okay with the fact that your children's souls are dying because they don't come to Mass? Yes, I am encouraging you to cause a fight this Thanksgiving. Go ahead. You have fights at Thanksgiving anyway. I know you do. <laughs> Let it be about the right stuff. And as long as you have life and breath as a mother, a father, a grandparent, and you know your children and grandchildren are not going to Mass, I hear the confession of children, and I may not tell you, I'm forbidden to tell you any individual confession, but I can tell you about many of them. And many of them are eight-year-olds and ten-year-olds. And they come to confession, they say, Father, I have not been to Mass. And of course, I give them the absolution and all of that. But is that the sin of the eight-year-old? The eight-year-old who does not have a driver's license. The eight-year-old who cannot ride her bike two miles to church in the winter. Whose fault is it that those precious souls are dying? If not the parents and grandparents who don't even believe that there is a soul that must be fed by the Holy Eucharist. No more excuses. Decide now I no longer wish to be a Catholic, but I at least will send my children with some other Catholics to go to Mass to receive the life-saving grace for their souls. Today is the feast of Christ the King. Today we declare, Jesus Christ, be King of my soul. Be shepherd and Lord, guide and protector. Jesus Christ, I do not believe like the world around me that I am nothing but chemicals, nothing but molecules, that I will turn to dust when I die. Jesus Christ, I believe that you made me body and soul. My soul will live forever. I was made in the image and likeness of God, Jesus. Please keep me close to the grace that will feed and nourish my soul for heaven. Let me never stray from the Eucharist. And, O oh Lord, grant, I pray especially, that my children and my grandchildren, our young ones, will stay close to the sacraments and that they will not be able to get away with excuses that it's boring. Who cares if it's boring? Who will not be able to get away with excuses that they're beyond that? <laughs> On the judgment day, they will not be on them. Oh, Jesus, give us the guts, the courage as Catholic parents and grandparents not to care whether our children and grandchildren like us or not, but only to be concerned for their souls and to do whatever it takes 
to keep them close to Jesus Christ now and forever.